Good morning, everyone. Christ is risen. Al Messiah come. Christos anesti, Christos anesti. Has someone ever asked you, are you Catholic or are you Christian? Or perhaps, are you saved? Or why do Catholics baptize children? Or other faith related questions? If so, most of us, the answer is yes. We need to ask ourselves today, do we feel comfortable answering these and other faith-related questions? We should, because in the first letter of St. Peter, tells us that we should always be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. If there is hope in us, then we need to be able to speak of that hope both comfortably and also convincingly rather than run away from the question and um, say we're busy at the moment. The first question that I asked this morning, are you a Catholic or are you a Christian, should be an easy one to answer since Catholics are Christians. In fact, our Malachi Catholic Church, which traces its roots to both Jerusalem and Antioch is the first church in the New Testament. We should all have Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, 26, memorized, which reads, For a whole year Barnabas and Paul met with the church and taught a large company of people, and in Antioch the disciples were, for the first time, called Christians. We are the Church of Antioch. And it should be a great honor for us that the word Christian was first used in the city of Antioch. And it's important for us not only to come to church and to uh, worship and pray, but also to be immersed in our faith, to be immersed in the early church and how these, how these words were used in the early church. As the church grew beyond Jerusalem and Antioch, there was a need to distinguish between those who follow the same beliefs and those who ended up splitting off to start their own separate communities. The word Christian simply means a follower of Christ. The word Catholic was eventually added to it because it's the word that means universal in Latin, or belonging to the whole in Greek. Therefore, the communities, as they spread out to the whole world, who believed in the same thing from place to place, and whose beliefs could be traced back historically to the apostles, were called the Catholic universal Christians, because they were universal and their beliefs were consistent with the history of the church and with other communities who trace themselves back to apostolic times. In fact, the word tradition became very important not only in the, in the New Testament, but also in the church. Because this word was used by St. Paul in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2.15, where he says, Stand firm and hold to the traditions which you were taught by us either by word of mouth or by letter. And then he also says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, 6, keep away from anyone who is living in idleness and not in accord with the tradition that you receive from us. Therefore, when we speak of tradition in the church and tradition in the New Testament, we are not talking about home traditions, the color that you prefer to to, uh, to put on your tablecloth, but these are holy traditions that even St. Paul says, things that were handed on to him that he also hands on to us and we receive and hand on to the next generation. Therefore, we are not a Catholic or a Christian. We are a Catholic Christian. Today, some Protestants have reversed this and refer to themselves as the Christians, 
There, are, there have been divisions from day one, but the church that is one and consistent in belief from the time of the apostles is the Catholic Church. Many are, are discovering this and converting back to the Catholic Church if they had once left the Catholic Church or those who are of other traditions who have left, who, who discovered the life of the early church and what it means to belong to a historic church. For example, Patrick Coffin, a well-known author, blogger, radio host, and speaker, was raised Catholic, but then became Protestant. And after some serious study, he came back to the Catholic faith. In 2018, he interviewed Lizzie Estella, a YouTube celebrity who on March 31st, 2022, celebrated her fourth year anniversary of being Catholic. For several years prior to that, she had been posting faith-related clips. She said that after seeing the early church, looking into what the early church community believed and how they lived, she had no choice but to conclude that the only churches today that have remained consistent in their belief and practice for the past 2,000 years are the Catholic and Orthodox churches. In that interview, both Patrick and Lizzie speak of their journey and regret that most Catholics do not even know their own history, and that is why they end up turning away from their belief. Patrick said that while he was a Protestant, getting Catholics to leave their faith was easier than shooting ducks in a barrel. He said it was so easy because unfortunately most Catholics not clearly answer even the most basic question raised, uh, raised to them and related to who Jesus is, the role of Mary and the saints, what is the Eucharist, who, why Catholics baptize children, and many very simple and early faith traditions. And this is why we need to be aware of this fact. If we value what we believe, we will live what we believe. And we will also take time to learn more about our faith. That should be easy today in the age of the internet as we no longer need hundreds and hundreds of books and a massive library to amass. We have access to practically anything we want to learn from history, topics related to our beliefs, or every other element of our faith. But we need to know where to go. Today's readings relate to these early customs that we have maintained until today. They are both exceptionally rich. In the Acts of the Apostles, the early Christians were courageous because they knew what they believed and they were not afraid to tell everyone what their belief was. And they, they lived and proclaimed this faith despite getting beat up or thrown in jail for their faith. They, in fact, often said, we rejoice in our sufferings for our faith. They were so completely convinced of their faith that those who met them, sometimes instantaneously, were convinced themselves and joined their faith. In today's reading from the Acts of the Apostles, we should always be amazed at how these things took place, that even the prison guard became a follower of Jesus when he saw the faith of Paul and Silas. Let's look at some details of this dialogue between Paul, Silas, and the prison guard. The prison guard called for lights and rushed in, and trembling with fear, he fell down upon Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, Men, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke the word of the Lord to him and to all that were in the house. 
And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. And he was baptized at once with all his family. Then he brought them up into his house and set food before them. And he rejoiced with all his household that he had believed in God. What a, con what a strong contrast from somebody who was ready to kill himself when he saw the earthquake in the jail to then seeing Paul and Silas and being so overwhelmed by the strength of their faith that he welcomed them to his house and him and his entire household were baptized. The early church grew because after Jesus rose from the dead, the disciples were exceptionally convinced of their faith and were unhesitant, unhesitant in sharing that faith and what they believed. They lived and spoke of their faith in such a convincing way that many others also believed. And when these people professed their faith, they were baptized, as we read in today's epistle reading, individually, but also with their entire household, their whole family. So the other question that I asked earlier, if someone asks you why Catholics baptize children, the very simple answer is because we are Catholic Christians who maintain the beliefs and customs of the early church who baptized not only individuals who came to faith, but the entire household, as found many times in the Acts of the Apostles. In the early church, as we read in today's readings, people believed and were baptized along with their entire family. Through baptism, the emphasis was that their whole family became part of God's family. There are many other reasons why we baptize children, which I can't get into right now because it's fairly lengthy. But we can find the answers to these questions and every other question that we have when we are consistent in our reading of the Bible, specifically the New Testament. It should be something that we do pretty well every day. If not a chapter, at least a paragraph. If not a paragraph, at least a sentence or two, slowly and gradually, until every single movement, every single thought, and every single word of both Christ and the early church become very familiar with us. We are sometimes, unfortunately, afraid when either Protestants, Jehovah Witnesses, or Mormons challenge us. We should not be afraid. We should know our faith, our history, and reverse this on them and challenge them instead. A friend of mine once told me that Jehovah Witnesses and Mormons used to always knock on his door. But then when he answered their questions, and challenged them with new questions. They kept on coming into the neighborhood, but they no longer knocked on that door. There are many people who leave Catholic Church because they do not know their faith. But there are also thousands, like Patrick Coffin, Lizzie Estella, and others, who when they study the Bible and church history, realize that the early church was a Catholic community that believed the same thing regardless of where and when they lived. And when you look around us today, those beliefs and prayers have been maintained for the last 2,000 years until today. We, we love God when we learn more about God. We love our faith when we learn more about how God is working in our life and in the lives of the many other men and women who have consistently and faithfully carried that faith to us from that first Easter morning in Jerusalem and then Antioch. Now, as we look around the whole world, we see that faith is present, strong, and growing to the ends of the world as Jesus commanded the disciples, and hopefully alive and well here in Orange County, 
placentia in each and every one of your homes.